Greetings all, Last Outrider here with a new segment known as Who Are the Tau? Lots to be said about the Tau with their new codex. Rise of the Tau. The Tau say, from out of darkness bursts the light. A phrase in their language that is laden with meaning referring at once to the sudden and dramatic sunrise typical of the planet Tau, of the legends told of the coming of the ethereals, and of the vigorous surge of expansion that now is spreading further out into the blackness of the galaxy. Near the eastern fringe of the galaxy lies the small planet of Tau. It is an arid world, with few lush areas and shallow oceans. The planet is dominated by a massive continent whose lands are composed of game-rich savannas and sweeping plains, broken by patches of rocky desert. Long before the Tau took to the stars, they began as hunters on these plains. And as their tribes grew, they spread across the lands, following migrating game, avoiding natural disasters, and seeking to escape growing, growing rivalries. As the centuries passed, each branch of the dispersed Tau began developing their own way of displaying unique talents and for adapting to their chosen environment. High on the isolated mountain peaks, some soared on thermals, rising up from the hot plains on thin, membranous wings. Wow. Those found plentiful employment amongst other Tau as messengers and scouts. Those whose migrations carried them to the river valleys began establishing well-constructed farming communities, developing their metallurgical and tool-making and mining skills to create the first settlements. Others realized that different communities could produce what they could not, and negotiated trade agreements between the disparate tribes, recognizing the inherent value in each other's talents. The Tao who remained on the plains grew stronger, becoming skillful and aggressive hunters. They took what they wanted, and if they had to fight in honorable battle to get it, so much the better. Advanced Evolution The story of evolution, from stone tools to a more advanced society, is a common enough tale throughout the galaxy. What makes the Tao story notable is the speed at which their culture leapt from stage to stage. It was not many generations after they established their first settlements that the Tao began building fortresses using combustion firearms to defend them from marauding tribes of plain dwellers allied with the Tao of the air. Trade routes were cut, and the Tao who negotiated between various tribes were attacked to prevent alliances from being formed. Soon, vast intertribal wars ravaged the main continent, with Tao tribes turning on each other in savage battles, utilizing primitive firearms. The fighting dragged on for many years, thousands dying on every side, with no end to the slaughter in sight. Squalid conditions caused by the fighting and a lack of fresh food and water allowed plagues to spread until more Tao were dying of disease than were being killed in battle. As the savagery of the fighting escalated, it seemed as though the Tau race would surely extinguish itself 
with the fires of its own barbarity. The coming of the ethereals. The Tao had entered their darkest age, when the entire race was being destroyed by war and disease. At this time, strange lights were seen in the sky, and many believed these were signs that they were living in the last days. That extinction was nigh. From these times come many different myths of how the race was pulled back from the brink of annihilation, of which the ethereals of Pheoton is the foremost. The legend tells that on a mountain plateau called Pheoton, an alliance of plain dwellers and airborne Tau laid siege to the mightiest walled city of the Builder Tau, a great fortress citadel. In vain, the traders attempted to negotiate with the fierce plains warriors, but their blood was afire, and they would brook no treaty save for the kind delivered from the end of a rifle. For five long seasons, the cannons of Fio Tuan held the attackers at bay, but supplies were low, and disease was rife within the city walls. As night fell upon another bloody day of fighting, the leaders within Fio Tuan were in despair, little knowing that succor was on the way. Emerging from the darkness, a Tao of unusual appearance walked into the besiegers' camp, asking to see the army's commander. He was softly spoken, yet it was said that he bore an undeniable authority and the centuries to whom he had announced himself found themselves compelled to escort him to their leader. At the same time, within the walls of Fiotan, a similar individual presented himself to the guards. How he penetrated the defenses of the city, he would not say. All he asked was that he be allowed to speak to the castellan of the fortress. Again, his request could not be denied, and he was permitted an audience with the ruler of the city. Within an hour, the fortress gates were opened, and the stranger guiding the citadel's leaders towards the torchlit camp of their attackers. As the enemies met, the newcomers, who called themselves ethereals, bade all to sit. Beneath a maiden moon of purest white, they began to speak, the mysterious strangers explaining that the skills of each tribe were unique and should be harnessed, and they spoke of a greater good that could be achieved only if they would put aside their feuding ways and instead work together. The two strangers talked through the night, their words heavy with great power. As the sun crested the horizon, a truce was agreed between the warring factions. Fiotan was just the beginning. Soon more ethereals appeared, and their message of the greater good spread to every corner of the planet. The new philosophy took hold quickly. With the intercene wars over, the Tao flourished as never before. Well-constructed towns and cities sprang up across the main continent. Commerce routes were re-established 
and everywhere, the winged Tau provided speedy communications. More ethereals went to visit the plain dwellers that visited, than visited all the other tribes combined. As the most aggressive of all Tau, these warriors had the hardest time accepting the new ways and required much convincing. Yet, as they saw the larger and more impressive settlements being established by the other tribes, they could not help but admire the great progress, and finally submitted to the Ethereals' entreaties. From that time forth, the Ethereals and a council of the eldest from each tribe decreed that the Tau would be formalized into castes, each known by the element that most befitted its role in the greater good. The builders and artisans would be the earth caste. The scouts and messengers became the air caste. The traders and civil administrators formed the water caste. And the warriors of the plains would be known as the fire caste. Having saved the Tao from either extinction or, at least, ignoble savagery, the ethereals were revered with the most utmost devotion. Although always the least numerous of all the castes, the ethereals became the guiding force for all Tau, as it was they who saw the vision of what the future could hold for their species. There you go. That was the development of the caste system. And next, we will talk about dynamic expansion. Until then, bye.